The z-score is going to be something that we're going to use constantly. Now, it has a weird sounding name. A lot of students see the z-score. That, that must be hard. Really, it's just a weird name for something that's very, very simple to understand. Let me try to explain the z-score to you verbally, and then I'll put something on the board that you might kind of see in a book, and then we'll work a couple of problems to kind of give you the hang of it. All right, so in terms of making it easy to understand, I want you to think about uh, grades in a classroom because we all have experience with grades, especially when you get to college. You know, when a professor gives a test, um, you know, in high school the grades are, you know, 90 to 100 is an A and 80 to 89 is a B and so on. But when you get to college, everything is going to depend upon the average of the class test scores and the standard deviation uh, there. So basically you want to know, not necessarily if you got a 90 to 100 when you get to university classes, you really want to know how close are you to the mean. Are you lower than the mean? Well, then you didn't do as well as your classmates, and so that's not a very good test score. Did you score right on top of the mean? And if you did, okay, you did just as good as everybody else. You probably got a decent grade, an okay grade. Not a great grade, but if you got close to the mean or on top of the mean, you're doing okay. Now, if you got better than the mean, then you're doing better than a lot of your other students and you should pat yourself on the back. And if you blow it away and you smoke it and you get really far out in front of the mean, then you've aced that test when most of your classmates haven't. And so you know that you've probably got an A, for instance, if you get really far out in front of the mean. So what we want to do in this section is kind of quantify that. We would like to know, given some uh, population or some sample characteristics like mean and standard deviation, like for tests, for instance, and I have a certain score, I may want to know how far in front of the mean I am. And the easiest way to calculate that is how many standard deviations am I in front of the mean, or above the mean, or below the mean. That's what you really want to know. Because remember, it's not an absolute thing when you're talking about grades in, in, in like a college class. You want to know how close are you to the mean, are you below it, are you above it, and if so, how far above it and below it are you. So a lot of times, for instance, remember we talked and we said that if you have a data that's a normally distributed or we call it a bell curve shape or bell shaped, that data that's falling within one standard deviation represents 68% of the data. So if I have you know, a test score with a mean of a 50 and a standard deviation of 10, then I know that if I'm within one standard deviation plus or minus of that mean, then I'm with about 68% of the class is falling in that range. And we also said that if you're within two standard deviations of the mean, so if I did really well and got better than the mean by two standard deviations, then I've done, uh, you know, I've done very, very well because 95% of my classmates are gonna be falling between that value and then value two standard deviations on the other side. So if you can get two standard deviations above the mean, you're doing very, very well because there's only 5% because 95% fall there, so there's only 5% that did better than you. And if you get three standard deviations above the mean, then you, you should know that that's really on the tail of that bell curve and you've done extremely well. So what we want to do is figure out how to calculate what we call a z-score to help us figure out how far above or below the mean we are. And it's going to be comparing it to how many standard deviations we have gotten above or below that mean. So let's go and talk about that. This is something you're going to see a lot. It's called a standard score. It's also called a z-score. So you might see both in your book, standard score or z-score. I'm going to write it in my own words. Your book probably won't have this kind of definition. This is what I like to say. It tells us how many standard deviations, that's what standard dev means, a number is above or below the mean. Basically it lets us compare between data sets, it lets us compare between values in different populations. So if I were going to write down how to calculate the z-score, then it would be z, literally you call it z, is equal to the data value you have minus the mean of the data set divided by the standard deviation. This is for a population, which we've already talked about. Population is everybody that we care about. The reason you know it's a population is because it goes with uh, mu for the mean and sigma for the standard deviation. Or you might see it written, 
as the data value minus the average value over the standard deviation s, and this is for a sample. You know, this is kind of the, this is sort of the reason why I spent so much time early on explaining what a population was and what a sample was, because the equations these are actually the same equation, but they they have different variables depending on if you're talking about samples or standard deviations. When you see mu's and sigmas, you know you're talking about the population, which is everybody you care about. Um, when you see x bar, this is also the mean, and you have the standard deviation, we call it s. That's if you're talking about a subset or a small sample of a larger population. So what is this telling us? If I wanted to know, let's, let's take the example of test scores. If I wanted to know how far above the mean I was, then I would probably subtract my value from the mean, right? So let's pretend the mean is a 80. The mean grade on the test was an 80, but I got a 90, all right? So I want to know how far above the mean I am. So obviously I want to subtract 90 minus 80. So that's what I would do here on the top. Forget about, forget about the bottom stuff. The grade I have is what we call x. I subtract the mean of all the test scores. I'm trying to find out how far ahead of the mean I am. So I subtract them, right? But that isn't very useful just to stop there with that subtraction. Because if I have different populations with different means and different standard deviations, which means a different spread among the data, then it's not very helpful just to know how far ahead of the mean I am because I need to also take into account how spread out that data is. So I need to divide by the standard deviation. So this is going to tell me how far in front of the mean I am, straight subtraction. I divide by sigma, that's gonna tell me how many standard deviations I am in front of the mean. That's what I wanna know. I don't wanna know how many points I am ahead of the mean. I wanna know how many standard deviations I am in front of the mean. So if the standard deviation was five points, Right? Then I would have 90, which would be my score, minus 80, which was the mean. That would mean I'm 10 points ahead of the mean, but the standard deviation is 5, so I divide by 5. 10 divided by 5 would be 2. That means I'm 2 standard deviations in front of the mean. That's what you want to know when you're calculating z-scores. It's telling you, tells us how many standard deviations a number is above or below the mean. That's what you want to know, how many standard deviations. I want to be able to go to my friend after we take the exam and get the grades back, I don't, and he's in a different class than me with a different professor, I don't wanna know how many points I am. I mean, in other words, if I tell him, man, I got 10 points above the mean, I'm awesome. And he's like, I only got six points above the mean. Well, that's not very useful. I mean, I may have done worse than him. It depends on how the standard deviation is. We want to compare our grades in terms of how many standard deviations I am above the mean. Because you, you need to compare to your peers. The mean is one, centralized value, the standard deviation takes into account how spread my data is. So I subtract my value from the mean, I divide by the standard deviation of my data, that's gonna tell me how many sigma I am above or below the mean, then I can compare to my friend. And I'll ask him how many sigma he is above or below the mean, and then whoever has, is more standard deviations above or below the mean is the winner. Because now we're comparing apples to apples, even though we have different classrooms. So let's put this all in context. I, I hope that the words help you, you know, but I need to do a, a problem to show you what I'm talking about. So here we go. The SAT exam average math score is 500 with a standard deviation of 150 points. What is the standard score for a person who scores a 630 on the test? So when you see a question like, what is the standard score? You need to replace that. Or if you see, what is the Z score? You need to replace that in your head with the following words. What is, or how many standard deviations is he above the mean? Because in this problem we have, we know the mean is 500. We know the standard deviation is 150 points. This guy clearly scored higher than the mean. He got 630. Fantastic. But we want to know how many standard deviations he scored above the mean. That's going to really be the measure of how good he did. And then we can compare him to some other person taking a test very easily. Put them on equal footing. So in order to do this problem, right, let's write down what we know. We know the mean of this guy is 500. We know the standard deviation is 150. So the z-score is going to be whatever score I got minus the mean, and we need to divide by the standard deviation to put it in the right terms. So this guy scored a 630 on the exam you subtract off 500 for the mean. If we stop the calculation here, this is going to be how many points above the mean this guy scored. That's wonderful, but we wanna know how many standard deviations. So we have to divide this result that we get 
by 150 because that's going to be telling us how many standard deviations we have. So when you do this subtraction, you will get 130, and on the bottom you have 150. And so what you're going to get at the end of the day is a z-score of, when you take 130 divided by 150, you'll get 0 0.8. 8, 6, 7. And I'm going to write it in words what it means because just saying Z is 0.867 is not terribly useful. So what it means is the score of 630 is 0.867 standard deviations above the mean. All right, so this guy did do you know, good, but he's not even one standard deviation above the mean. So he did do better than the average of the class. It's great, but he didn't smoke it. He didn't just blow it out of the water because if he did, he would at least be one sigma beyond, one standard deviation beyond. That's kind of like a nice break point. If you're doing one sigma, one standard deviation better than the mean, then you've really done well and you're kind of standing out from your peers. This guy's almost there. He's 0.867. Uh, standard deviations above the mean. So he did do better than his peers. He got a solid B plus, but he didn't get an A plus because if he did, he would be even farther ahead of everybody else. So this is a great example to show you how we're going to compare these things. Now what I want to do is another example that's going to drill it in even more. We're going to compare two people uh, that are scoring different grades on their test. But keep in mind that the concept of the Z-score, it doesn't just apply to exams and grades. It applies to any data set. So here we go. Person A scored an 87 on his physics test, uh, and the class average was an 80 with a standard deviation of 5. All right, Person B scored an 82. Her class average was a 73 with a standard deviation of 6. The question is, who scored better on this exam with respect to their class? I mean, it's very clear to see, if you just look at these two tests, that one of these people scored an 87 and one of these people are scored an 82. So if I just read the, the, the thing, I'm going to say, well, person A did better. He did better on his exam. He got an 87. He had a higher grade. Unfortunately, that may not tell the whole story because look how high the class average was. That guy that got an 87, the class average was an 80. The standard deviation was 5. So he did score higher than the average, but not that much higher. right? This other person scored an 82, but her class average was much lower. So her test was probably harder. Okay, And she, or he, uh, did a little bit better in terms of comparing it to the mean, but we want to calculate it in terms of how many standard deviations they are, and then we can really compare them. So we're going to write down and do all of this in sequence. So for person A, what we know is the mean is an 80, and the standard deviation was a 5. So if we're going to calculate the z-score for this person, or the standard score, it would be z. Uh, is equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Now in this case the person scored an 87 on the exam and we subtract the mean and we divide by 5. So we'll have 7 fifths uh, which is 1.4. So what it means is that since you get 1.4 it's 1.4 uh, which means he scored 1.4 standard deviation, or 1.4 sigma, above the mean. So this person clearly did do well. I mean, they, they really did. They did well. They did better than one standard deviation above the mean. That means they're clearly kind of a standout crowd. They're not in the group of people that are packed right next to the mean. They did do very well. Let's compare and see how person B did. All right, so for person B, the mean of their exam was 73. The standard deviation of their exam was 6. So if we want to go and do the same calculation, we will have that the z-score is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. The score this person actually received on this test was 82 minus 73, which is the mean, divided by 6. And when you do this subtraction, what you're going to get is 9 over 6. And so what you're going to get is 1.5. So I think you can kind of see the conclusion here. For this guy, the z-score is 1.5, which means he did 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So let me ask you, which person actually did better on their exam with respect to their classroom results?
The answer is person B actually did better than, than person A. Uh, because although it looks as if person A did better on the surface, they got the higher score. Their test may have been easier because lots of people got in the 80s. The mean was an 80 actually. And the standard deviation was a five, so that means there's lots of 80s and some 70s. This person did do seven points higher than the mean up here, but compared to the standard deviation and the spread, he did 1.4 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, then we come down here and see this person did a seven, uh, did a score of an 82, but his average value was much, much lower. So he kind of blew it away a little bit more. In terms of his standard deviation, he was one and a half standard deviations above the mean. That is how you want to compare for instance, grades or what other, ever, what other data you're studying, you're going to have mean and standard deviation. If you have two different populations with different characteristics like this, like two different testing uh, classrooms, and you're trying to compare values among them, you're going to need to calculate a z-score. That's going to tell you where your data is lying with respect to the mean in terms of standard deviations above or below the mean. I hope that this um, kind of clarifies it and makes it in, uh, in your head what a z-score really is for because we're going to use it quite a bit in future sections of, of mastering statistics. We're going to use it a lot, in fact, so make sure you understand it. The other thing I want to say is that the z-score can actually be negative. It's very frequently ne negative. Let's say for person B that their grade was not an 82. Let's say that their grade was a 65. 65. So they didn't do well. They did poor, very much poorer than the mean. So we would have 65 minus 73. That would give us a negative number on the top. We would still divide by 6 and we would get a negative z-score. So if, if they got, for instance, negative 1.5 for the z-score, that would mean that you were one and a half standard deviations below the mean. So you see, z-score can be positive or negative. If you get a positive z-score, it means you're that many standard deviations uh, higher than the mean. If you get a negative z-score, it means you're that many standard deviations below the mean. So don't be freaking out if you get like a negative number for z-score. It's very common. We didn't run into it in this example, but it's very, very common. That about does it for z-scores, and that actually does it for this batch of lessons for mastering statistics. We really have covered a tremendous amount of material uh, in this set of lessons so far. We have covered the very basics of what a population is, what a sample is, uh, we've talked about data outliers, we've turned about, talked about sampling bias, and you've got to make sure and you're choosing your, your people that you're sampling from a nice cross-section of your population. We've talked quite a bit about uh, calculating the mean and calculating the standard deviation and calculating the variance and the coefficient of variance. And we've talked about how you can roll all of this information together and calculate uh, the five number summary of data, which are basically the quartiles, and you can use that to kind of just basically get an idea of what your data looks like. A lot of what we've learned so far is just trying to understand your data set. Take all those values and make some summaries and see if we can understand what it is. And we've talked about the z-score, which is going to come into play later on as well. We've also done a lot of graphing. We've talked about histograms and frequency distributions, and we've talked about uh, box and whisker plots to represent your data set. So we've covered an enormous amount of groundwork. All right. Now in the future, we're going to be getting into situations where we're trying to look at our population and estimate what's going to happen based on what we know. So far, we've kind of just studied our samples and tried to calculate a few things. In the future, we'll be doing a lot of testing to see if we can predict what's going to happen with this information. And that's where statistics is really useful. So I hope you've enjoyed this batch of lessons. Uh, please make sure you watch it enough times to understand all of this and then follow me on into volume two of Mastering Statistics where we will continue right where we have just ended, continuing on building your skills step by step along the way. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.